Happy, healthy, homo, buy a mugs. If you're on a Patreon. Hey, hey homos! Welcome back to our channel. Yes, we are back and we have mugs. We are with mug. <laughs> we have mugs. Look at this. These are currently the only two happy, healthy, homo mugs that exist in the world. And yeah. they belong to us. And you can only get them if you're part of our Patreon channel. So... Yeah, oh, we're starting off straight in the parish notes. Well, it's exclusive. Yeah, so we have started a Patreon account, which gives us a chance to sort of deepen our relationship with you guys. Yeah, where it's got community. You can offer perks. Yeah, there's perks in there for you guys, mm -hmm. ad-free stuff. Early mm -hmm. access. Merch, early access to the tour that we're looking at doing later this year. Mm. Mm. See, and I, I give as well as take. <laughs> the, uh, the highest tier, our $10 tier, um, you get a free mug. Yeah. So if you want one of these, then consider becoming a Patreon. Yeah, and there's also the, the important part of the Patreon thing is there's a community hub yeah. there, so we can chat to you mm -hmm. in there. That's that's why we want to do it. And it helps keep the lights on for the podcast. Yeah. And yeah, so it's just a good time. So today we are back with another helpful homos. As you can tell from the title of this video, there is another homo out there in desperate need of our help. Yeah, so we're going to read one of your letters as always, and we're going to give you our solicited advice as a reminder we are not professionals. We're not. We're definitely not professionals. So please do what you will with our information. And if you've got any input as well, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a long one. I'll read it. <clears throat> Bear with. Strap in. In, not on. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Hi, Keegan and Joe. Hello. Thank Hi. you so much for your podcast. I recently had the courage to look up Help, I Might Be Gay on YouTube. And thankfully, the algorithm suggested your videos first. Oh, Amazing. Man. Good work, YouTube. Very recently, I broke up with my bi partner, she there, of about one year. We connected almost instantly through a video game and long talks afterwards. We were yin and yang, and there was so much we could learn from each other. I've been seeking therapy for depression, amongst other topics. During the latest appointment, I questioned whether my coming out as bisexual one year ago, just before her and I officially got together, was accurate. I do feel attracted to men, but all my sexual experience as an adult has been with females. Discussing that topic with my partner led to me pulling the ripcord on the relationship. I would rather not lie to her and myself and find myself in a situation years later where we would need to dismantle a shared living situation, a shared life. I'm devastated for having lost my best friend and I'm confused and overwhelmed. I feel a lot of guilt with the breakup. I'm currently trying to reevaluate my whole life. Was I conditioned through my Christian upbringing in a small town to be heteronormative? Yes, probably. Do I have so much internalized homophobia to the extent that I would not acknowledge that I might be gay? That much I'm trying to figure out still. Having watched a few select episodes of Happy Healthy Homo, I would love to hear from you both about coming to terms with your sexuality. Keegan's experience with having kids, I assume in the context of a hetero relationship and Joe's viewpoint on that as your partner. If you end up touching on that topic, I would like to remain anonymous. Thank you for your consideration and thanks so much for portraying a happy, healthy, homo community. Lots Aww. of love, Frank. We call him Frank. Oh, Frank. Well, let's be Frank. Yeah, that's that. a lot, lot to cover, isn't it? This touches on that age old trope of, and I'm going to say this, but I don't mean it in a derogatory way, where people would say, buy now, gay later, wouldn't yeah. they? Mm -hmm. And bisexual was seen as uh, it, as if it didn't exist and it was a gateway, which is obviously not true. There are people who are bisexual. But I do think for a lot of gay men, and myself included, when I first came out to my ex-wife, actually, I said that I was bisexual. And it was because of internalised homophobia. It was because yeah. I struggled to... I couldn't say that I was gay. Or, it, like, it would literally stick in my throat. Mm. And that was, for me, more palatable. I obviously wasn't experienced at that point in the realms of the LGBT community. And I appreciate that that's a horrible position. That's something that bisexual people have to contend with a lot where people say oh you're just gay and, da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. and that's not the case so just from the top let's put that out there it, i think it's really important to remember that we we don't come out when we come out of the closet we don't come out as a fully fledged gay no it takes it takes time For some people never feel completely comfortable with it mm. some people it takes five minutes some people it takes five decades and i think it d does lead to feeling guilty that we've misled people or even misled ourselves. I know I certainly felt that. But this is where we've got to have a bit of self-compassion and and, and realise that we can only deal with what we're presented with, with the tools that we've 
got at that particular moment. Mm. Like this version of Keegan now that's sat on this camera, you know, that has a podcast called Happy Healthy Homo and is doing this segment on YouTube would never in a million years have, at that point in my life, would I have thought that I'd be able to do this. The, mm. the thought of being comfortable, the thought of being, not only saying that I was gay, but actively <laughs> chatting about it on social media was so far away from where I was at. Yeah. So I think it's really easy to look back or look down on people mm. who are not that far along on their journey and the impact that going through that has on people. Yeah. And you shouldn't feel bad. Like you were saying, it's everyone has that. We've all lied to people. Every single, I would hazard a guess that every single gay person has lied to other people in their lives about being gay. When people have questioned me about it growing up, friends, family, I've not had the courage in that moment to tell them the truth. And I said that, no, I'm straight. I said I'm bisexual. At one point I told people I was asexual because I was like, oh, it's better for me to have no sexuality than be gay Mm. it's better for me to be bisexual than gay it's better for me to be anything but gay and now I look back like and feel really guilty even we went to my friend's wedding and there was a girl there that I dated and then I was like I feel so awkward here because I'm thinking she must be thinking I can't believe Joel misled me and Joel imagine if I dated Joel fully and then he would have come out and ruined my life I don't know if she's thinking that. Even King was like, I think you're overthinking it. You're just assuming she's thinking that. And that's like a very real thing, I think, for lots of us, where we have all lied to people, not because we want to, maybe because we've truly believed what we were saying. Yeah. And I know yours are slightly different because you're, you know, there's a woman that you loved or still love and you're worried that you've hurt her. But like Keegan said, we all come to things in our own way. And if this was what it took in order for you to be fully accepting and fully sort of, comes yeah. to terms with your sexuality, then sadly that is what it took. It doesn't mean that it was right and that you wouldn't change it if you could, but you can't change it. So therefore you should be like, well, I don't... Like instead view it as, oh, I'm thanking this person for being able to come to terms with my sexuality. And I'm, I am deeply sorry if it's come at the cost of hurting you, mm. but I'm just so thankful that I had that experience. You don't necessarily need to say this to them, but to yourself, I'm thankful that I had that experience because without dating her, I wouldn't have realised that yeah. I was gay. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I went one, a few steps further than you. I got married and mm-hmm. had two children. And and genuinely, at the time of doing that, I, you know, when I got married and I said that I do, I 100% believed it in the moment. Was I aware that I had, you know, wasn't 100%, I knew there was something going on, but mm. I thought it was kind of by the by and I could keep it. No pun intended. <laughs> I could keep a lid on it, which I, that ended up not being the case because mm-hmm. it, it was very difficult to do. And I remember when we broke up, I was riddled with guilt for mm-hmm. years and years, and it took a lot of therapy. And you know, I have two children who've you know come out of that relationship and uh, have divorced parents, and you know, there's there's all the things that go along with it. That was, I suppose, that was the process that I had to go through, and I feel even still to this day feel guilt and feel bad and you know an element of shame around the impact that that had had on other people because I wasn't brave enough to accept who I was and where I was and you know the the societal expectations that I had on me as someone who grew up in a small town northern town sportsman all that kind Mm. of stuff there's loads of reasons for things but Mm. I think it's so easy to go on this route of like destroying ourselves Mm -hmm. over the, the actions that we like, everybody makes mistakes and some are bigger than others. And some have an impact on others more than others. That doesn't justify them and, and mean that it's okay to go around hurting people and lying to people. But there's also a reason why we've, we've no one's done that because they're malicious because they've wanted to lead somebody along. That's, certainly not the case and and even if there is an element of that in people's relationships it's from a place of fear Mm. you know from not being accepted being rejected losing things and you know it's easy to sit in an ivory tower and say well you shouldn't do that and you know i'm sure we can all appreciate we shouldn't do that but yeah human beings and life is 
not black and white and it's a complexity yeah. of, of issues. Well, it's about accepting that you will hurt people. Like my favourite podcast is called Just Break Up and I love it. It's all about relationship advice and I've listened to it for years and one of the advice that one of them gave and I think they took it from someone else so I'm going to pass it on to you is that you were never meant to go through this life not hurting anyone. And like, I think we go through life uh, with a view of like, the way the world should be is that we never hurt anyone's feelings. We never upset anyone. We all just get along really well and there's no hurt or anything. And they were like, that is just a lie. That was never the universal truth. That was never, ever going to be possible. Like coming into this world, you will hurt people's feelings. Whether you mean to or not, you will hurt their feelings. You'll upset them. You'll anger, anger them. Hopefully most of that will be through things that you... Mistakes. You know, yeah. mistakes. Sometimes it will be because you've actively been a bit of a dick. I know I've been a dick, you've been a dick, we can all be dicks. But regardless of that, you will hurt people. And so I think coming to terms with that and going, yes, okay, I might have hurt this person, but what good is feeling hurt about it gonna, gonna do? Well, and it just stops you from, it means that you have a bit more consideration going forward. Exactly. And it allows you to evolve and become a better person. And that mm -hmm. is what life is, isn't it? It's growth yeah. and it's evolution. It's progression like even in fairy yeah. tales people hurt people yeah exactly um, and it's not always villains you know it no. doesn't it's really easy as i said to portray things as black and white yeah but that's not what life is and if you've hurt someone who you care about and they care about you i'm sure if you ask them later down the line when the wound is less raw if they want you to feel bad about it they'll probably be like no there's no point feeling bad about it like what's done is done yeah. i don't know about your ex-wife but i can maybe assume that she doesn't want you to still now, to this day, years later, still beat yourself up about it. Yeah, well, I mean, we have a good relationship now, don't we? Well, exactly. So. Uh, your ex-girlfriend, I'm sure, at some stage will be like, there's no need for you to feel bad. I'm sure in the moment when it feels a bit rough, she mm. might be like, yes, I want you to feel bad. But ultimately, no one who cares about someone else wants them to suffer. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, have a bit of self-compassion, reflect on it. The fact that you've written in yeah. and they're already doing that, you know, shows a level of maturity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to go through certain things to get to a certain place. Yeah. And, and I hate, like, it gets used all the time, doesn't it? It's the journey that we go through. Yeah. But it, it really is a, a, a quest. It is. Um, so don't be too hard on yourself. The fact no. that you are actively, the fact that you are remorseful, regretful, mm -hmm shows that you're a decent human being and means that you're very unlikely to do it again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you yeah. don't feel that you have to come out of the mm. womb as a fully fledged gay because nobody's done that. No. Nobody. And don't reflect that negative feeling onto your sexuality. By by that I mean, don't be going, oh, I've hurt this person because I'm, because gay. I'm gay. Therefore Ergo, being gay, gay is bad. Is yeah. bad. That they're two completely different situations. I know they've, they've sort of got a causation, like a relationship, but they're not the same. Correlation does not equal causation. There we go. He's, he's the man with the, with the lingo. And he's the linguist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not the linguist. <laughs> the linguist. Um, well, I hope that helped, Frank. Um, yeah, don't feel bad. Please don't feel bad. And everyone who's watching this, if you leave a comment with your advice to Frank and just reassure him he doesn't need to feel guilty. Yeah, be kind. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're about. Yeah, be, be frank, be kind. Be frank, be kind. Uh, guys, if you have a problem or a question or a query that you want us to answer, then email us hello at happyhealthyhomo.com and we will endeavour to do that. And if you want to get involved in our podcast, we're now getting you guys to record your videos, your questions. Mm -hmm. So please check out our socials or the podcast episode yeah. um, and it'll tell you what we're going to be covering next. Yeah. So take a look at those. So we, we want to get as many of your voices and faces on there as possible. Yes, please. Um, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.